Hello, I'm Dr. Warren, and today I'm going to try to answer some questions about chronic Lyme and why doctors get confused, maybe talking about some of the myths of the testing, and maybe even just chronic infections in general. So first off, I get comments from other doctors that this means a past infection, or it's not active, or it's even not possible. So I get I get these comments from doctors. I'm going to kind of parse some of these out. So if you have an IgG positive, people say it's a past infection. You have an IgM, people say it's active and people will use the acute or chronic. And so we've got this question about like past, present, do you have it? Are you going to have it? This kind of past, present, future thing. And I think we can clarify just a little bit. So first and foremost, we have this idea that some doctors will literally tell you chronic Lyme is not possible. It's not a thing. It doesn't exist. It's not real. And this really comes from the fact that for 40 years, you know, your National Institutes of Health and your CDC really said it, it wasn't real, it just wasn't a thing. So you have this big argument going on in science about, no, yes, we have Lyme disease acutely, meaning you get the rash, you get the joint pain, and it all you know, happens within about a week or so of getting bit by a tick. What we argue about is, can you have chronic long-term debilitating symptoms from Lyme? I will also tell you that, you know, acute is life-threatening and chronic is really more debilitating. And so there's many doctors who look at acute infections and go, oh my gosh, they kill people. Chronic infections tend to be more debilitating, but do not have the same life-threatening problem that the acute infections have. The CDC literally taught for 40 years that chronic Lyme was not a thing. And then this April, they changed their stance and said, oh yeah, it is. Now, the problem with this is even though in April of 2022, we have the CDC updating going, oh my gosh, there is chronic Lyme, which they call PTLDS, which is post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome. They've been educating doctors for 40 years that it's not a thing. And so when the, the CDC flips like this, you still have 40 years of doctor education going a different way. And so I'm still not surprised when I get a medical doctor, we even get infectious disease doctors who are saying, no, chronic Lyme's not a thing. And I'm, I'm bringing them to the CDC website and going, well, CDC now says it's a thing. And they're like, oh, oh, you know, they're shocked. So this happened so recently. And when you've been teaching it one way for 40 years, and then you change, it's going to take some time for doctors to, you know, kind of realize, oh, that was a mistake. And now we need to do this differently. And so now the arguments need to be on what we do to help people with it. So what I want to kind of go through here is just why chronic anything, not just Lyme, is possible or not possible. And I'll try to keep this kind of big picture because this can get down in the details. I have to go through some details, so bear with me. We'll try to put a little bit of our nerd hat on, but I'm going to go through a little bit of just acute infection testing here. All right, so this is a normal immunoglobulin curve. First, if we start at the upper left, there's an incubation period. You get exposed to something and there's a period of time when it's in your body, but it's not really causing symptoms. Now we develop symptoms and as we develop symptoms, this is when we think we're sick and our body first creates immunoglobulin M. Immunoglobulin M is a pentagon shape and your body can make it relatively quickly. You will notice the purple arc of immunoglobulin M comes up in about a week and then it goes down. It's pretty much gone by about the three, four week mark. So most doctors will say an IgM is an active acute infection. Now you'll notice the IgG curve, IgGs are Y-shaped, comes up later and it spikes about three, sometimes four weeks after the infection. Now IgGs are very specific, they're Y-shaped and they can really hone in on certain parts of an infection. And then you'll keep some IgGs around long term. Notice it spikes up and then comes down. It does not stay up at the peak, but you will keep a low amount of immunoglobulin present so that if your body ever sees that again, you have some immunity. Now, this is where doctors will say if you have an IgG, but the M's gone, it's a past infection and it's no longer current. This is what they'll say. Now, this breaks down and we'll show how this breaks down, but this is what we're looking at. Now there's also CRP, you'll see right in the middle of the test, there's this green bar. The C-reactive protein goes up in acute infections. And so what doctors are looking at for acute infections is IgMs plus C-reactive proteins. And the issue is when we deal with chronic infections, you don't usually have IgMs, and you don't usually have C-reactive proteins. So the common thing is you have doctors saying, 
It's no longer here. It's no longer active. And they're doing so because of this kind of curve. Now, the whole issue is they're also assuming you got better, which is not a safe assumption. The whole point here is it's chronic, and I just want to highlight the days on this chart. Notice we go from zero to about 21. There's like about a month-long time frame here. Well, the whole issue is what happens once you get outside of this 30-day time frame? This is what's supposed to happen. But what happens when we're sick, you know, three months, six months, or we're getting to be years later and we're still sick, still not well? post a tick bite or post COVID, for example. But what if this turns into a long-term time frame? We would say, well, the check engine light's coming on. And the whole problem is when the check engine light's on, it means part of the engine of the car didn't work properly or isn't working properly. And that's the whole point. I understand that your immune system is supposed to work that way. You're also supposed to be sick for a couple of days to a couple of weeks and then get better. The problem we're dealing with is what happens to people who are chronically sick for months and years at a time. And the issue is, is that picture that we just drew with the IgMs being active and the Gs being passed breaks down and does not work properly in chronic. That's the whole point. You're chronically sick because it didn't work. The check engine lights on warning you, oh my gosh, something didn't go right. And that's why you're not better. This is a little bit of, you know, 1984 double think where we're thinking this is how it always works and chronic infections aren't real, except when you start to ask doctors about chronic infections, they actually have several examples of chronic infections. And we get to things like, well, if a doctor knows a lot about syphilis, syphilis is a spirochete like Lyme. This confused doctors because it has these phases of being active and dormant that was very confusing as we looked at it. You know, leprosy is a slow growing bacteria. Shingles and chickenpox, another example that goes chronic. HIV is chronic. Malaria can be chronic. Tuberculosis is chronic. Polio is a chronic. Long haul COVID, there's a certain amount of people who have COVID who are not getting better. We were recently at a seminar looking at some of these numbers. We're starting to get lots of data in on COVID. And we think right now, the latest numbers I've seen is about 7% of people after getting COVID are not returning to their baseline level of health. So once again, this is this about the same stats we deal with in Lyme. Maybe about 10% of people who have Lyme get chronically sick. 90% of people get better and move on with their life. But anything that happens to 10% of people means we have a group of people who are not recovering and are becomingly chronically sick or disabled. What is happening to them and what do their tests look like? because they don't look like the normal tests. And that's the whole point. In closing here, I want to bring this together. Doctors are becoming consciously aware that chronic Lyme exists, which is now called PTLDS, according to the CDC. And it is real. But this is happening slowly because it's 40 years of swimming upstream. There is help because COVID has a long haul syndrome. And the education on COVID and then what's happening with long haul COVID is helping us gain knowledge and understanding about what the immune system is doing when people are chronically ill. I am hopeful that the research coming out of this COVID and long haul COVID will help a myriad of other chronic debilitating diseases as opposed to the acute. Once again, COVID had an acute phase, which can be deadly. And also now there's this chronic phase like so many other bugs, including Lyme and other tick-borne infections. So this is the general immune system function and what's supposed to happen. But when people state these things like, well, an M's active and a G's passed, please just know that I really do not believe that that applies well to chronically sick people. And it's kind of a cognitive dissonance of we teach, well, this is how it works. I would say, no, no, this is how it's supposed to work. You're not supposed to be chronically ill. And this model and this simplicity breaks down when you deal with chronically sick people, but your doctor will still repeat it because it's what we learned and what we've been teaching for 40 years. Instead of just assuming, it is wiser to find out. And this is why in our office, we really like thorough testing. We run Gs, Ms, PCRs, and immune system markers to try to get a thorough look at when you're chronically sick, your immune system is stuck. And we wanna know how it's stuck in order to help 
unstick you and what you're fighting in order to kind of customize what you're doing to get better from any kind of chronic illness. But we think thorough testing of both bugs, tick-borne illness in particular, Lyme and co-infections, all the different species of Lyme, as well as a look at your immune system and how it's functioning is a vital part to getting you better. I'm Dr. Warren. I hope you found this video helpful.